What is up? May as well make another car video. Sadly, that's where I get all the views on this channel, it seems. But this is the other daughter's car. This, uh, I think it's an 016 Focus. And I've been curious all day what it is. Here it is. Oh, it's made in 1116, so it might be considered a 17. But same thing. She's starting to get a shutter, especially when this car first accelerates to go first to second gear. Um, a weird shutter to it. I just assumed these had the same transmission that our Ford Focus had, the six speed automatic. But evidently, these are the six speed dual clutch transmission. So I was just doing some research today, just looking to see if there's common issues with those. And one thing that people swear by is that this electrical connection right here, this ground right here, is crap. And I guess you get some bouncing on the uh, in electronics because of that. Being that it's a dual clutch, it uses several servo motors, uh, brushless DC motors to run the clutch servo in and out and to move the gear selectors inside. So. Um, so people are saying they get some weird issues with that. So let's see. I just hooked up a little jumper over here from the negative to here, just so the electronics don't lose their power when I do this. I'm gonna take this off, and take a look. But what people say they're doing is just cleaning the paint off and holding it back on. And I might add another ground strap, maybe from there down to the transmission, just for the hell of it too, just in case one of those body ground straps is shite. I don't know where it is. I didn't even look up to see where it was, but there's usually some of those flexible ground straps somewhere. Um, usually they're kind of in a logical spot, like, you know, a crossed frame to engine somewhere. There's our motor mount. Don't see one yet, but maybe I'd see it underneath if I took the diaper off of this thing, but anyway i might just pick a bolt or a spot to add a bolt looks like there might be some spots right there i might just add a ground strap right up to here just for the hell of it since i'm uh, gonna take that off anyway so. so the thing that people don't like is that when this this is this is the entire ground for the car other than uh, it might be another electrical wire over here but this is the main one this it starts through this it charges through it I'm sure and everything is that you see there's no metal to metal contact all the contact is the bolt through the washer into the bolt and then into the threads that's it so people are to saying that they're just taking just grinding off the paint and putting that back on and it's making a little bit of difference with a little less craziness so that was easy enough, just use the actually the uh, wire wheel. And that should give that a metal to metal connection there now. Okay, just so you can see what I'm doing is adding myself my own little extra cable going from the negative right on top of where the other one was with an extra nut. And then I just pulled this bolt out right here out of just this, uh, it's just a retainer for that. We're gonna drop this through here. And I'm gonna install that down in there. So it'll have a, won't have to just go through the chassis to the uh, engine, which is definitely bolted to the transmission. See if that helps any. Okay, that does that. Got that cable right here. And I just, you know, had some connectors, already had them here, and I just had to smash them on, and then I just put them on the, uh, you know, heat shrink tube. I just have that going over here, back to the negative. This is all cleaned up. So, let's see if I have any dielectric or anything to put over that. But this is Arizona. It doesn't really rust like it would in some areas. But now I'm to the point I'm like, all right, there's a indecisive movement is whether just to go ahead and use it the way it is, or should I actually disconnect the ground, wipe the computer, and make it all relearn? Evidently, I guess these have to relearn but i don't know how the memory is i don't know if unhooking the battery makes the that dct have to relearn or if that's like in an eprom you have to clear it actually uh i did notice when i was looking up some information there uh there is a way i guess to force these into relearn mode i'm able to just do that 
Okay, I actually did have some sauce to uh, smear all around that bare metal. So, just leave that on there. I guess I'll just uh, not clear the memory. Just see what it does. Because evidently it might not be the positioning not being learned properly of the the clutch with the servo, but the uh, just the fact that there's some maybe some perhaps some bounce or something it's making the brushless DC motors controller just wig out a little bit or something. So hopefully that's all it is, or this might not do anything for her. Maybe she needs a clutch. Who knows? It's got about 55, 60,000 miles on it, I think. And evidently, from what I'm looking at the internet, it's just very popular. And, and then she said, yeah, when she did uh, contact them. 55,000. Uh, talk to Ford, they said, oh, yeah, that shutter's actually common. <laughs> so now that I know that it is a DCT and it's not an automatic, I'm not as worried about it like breaking down. So um, probably just go forever like this <laughs> until you get sick of it. But if it was an automatic slush box, you know, doing what I felt, I thought it was like the torque converter, um, you know, or torque converter solenoid sticking, something like that, causing the shutter. And that's definitely something, you know, you don't always want to let go for too long. Now I know why yesterday, when I was trying to mess with the motor mounts, or testing four motor mounts, I was wanting to put it in gear, hold it in drive, foot on the brake, and try to hit the throttle. Just like it's in neutral up to the rev limiter. The only way I was able to get it to twist on the engine was to put the e-brake on and not put my foot on the foot brake which not something you're usually too comfortable doing but but see how it starts rolling when I let off but I can tell it's like totally in neutral watch it went back into neutral let my foot off the brake then it goes so this is definitely a DT, DCT <laughs> transmission so uh, didn't even know that but it's not anything I've been driving either well, going around the block I think it's actually better it feels still weird because it isn't just a regular slush box, but it might already be better. It did rev up a little bit right there, but that might just be it already moving the servo to the other pack. Maybe there's some wear on the clutches, but it didn't shudder. I haven't gotten it to shudder like it did when I drove this like two nights ago when I was like, holy shit, you know. Now this is one of those things that, just like if you get into a car that's a CVT and you're not used to it, you can be like, what the fuck's wrong with this thing? You know, it feels like it's slipping when, the more you get into the throttle because it holds the RPMs up and it's just changing the uh, ratio. Well, if you're on a hard throttle, it actually go up to, you know, peak RPM and then uh, just only change the secondary, you know, to, uh, you know, and it just changes the ratio of the output, you know, to hold the same RPM, but your speed is increasing where, on a regular transmission, your RPM and your output speed change proportionally, but at different ratios per gear. So those you have to get used to. We had one car, we had a Rogue. At first it was, oh, this is kind of cool. See, I heard this a little slight rattle right there, but it didn't shudder though, quite like it did the other night. But uh, yeah, we, we got that car stuck off road. It was an all wheel drive Rogue with a 2.5 liter four cylinder and it didn't have enough torque to pull itself up a hill. We went off down into a, off a pretty steep little drop up around Payson, Arizona, hard dirt. And when we turned, went to go back up and get out back up to the main road, it didn't have the torque, this all wheel drive four cylinder Nissan Rogue to get back up there. We were stuck for like a while and then we were in between trees. So I didn't have a running start cause you had to turn and go up between the trees. And I forget how I did, but I finally got out of there. But it was like, wow, we were almost stuck with an all wheel drive vehicle and it isn't because of traction problems. It was because it was wimpy. It didn't have like a low gear like a four-wheel drive vehicle would. So, I don't know. It feels like this thing's actually, I don't know. I took this course yesterday or the other day with her and I felt this thing being strange, you know, quite a bit. And now I'm actually looking for it to be strange. I'm just not really noticing it. So maybe that already kind of helped. And again, you have to get used to these transmissions. It's not a, a slush box 
with you know putting one clutch pack into another as an automatic does it's actually two gears are in are actually got first and second for example is in gear at the same time but the clutch is on first gear activated and the other one's disconnected at the same time it's a dual clutch dual manual clutch and so you're just spinning the uh the other ratio spinning but because the clutch is not connected it's not a bind and because the the mechanism moves this way you know it just connects one as it connects the other one you know you can't possibly have both engaged at the same time which would be bad it'd be like locking up the brakes if you bind two gears and so like a trans brake works you know an automatic for you know holding yourself in one position two gears activated at the same time causing a bind up so you can't really do that but what it is is it has this other gears already in gear and then all it does is switch the clutch from the one to the other just quickly with the you know motor serv motorized servo and then you're it, it can switch real quick that way and then once you're in second now it's going to line up like the next gear it's going to put the first forks you know from first to third and now those ratios are ready to go and you just got to switch clutch back to the first clutch this is driving like a fucking normal car i might have actually fixed it either that or it's intermittent but i don't know i didn't i didn't like uh clear her memory everything is the same as it was I don't know, it might actually be okay. I haven't felt any shuddering. Popos! daughter likes to live dangerous does she let's just do a normal accelerate again from like a light yeah see that's weird a little bit right there but that's probably just nature of it these clutches got fifty six thousand miles on it they're probably you know got a little bit of wear it's gonna do that a little bit but it's not shuddering so it might have been the uh electronics wigging out with the stepper motor controller huh so that'd be cool i'll let her uh tell me over the next day or so and I'll just put that update at the end of the video if this actually was a fix. And this will probably be another one of those videos that gets me the most of my views. It seems like, especially when I work on Dodge vehicles, fixing motor mounts, ball joints, stuff like that. I get a lot of, and I'm on an HVAC channel, you know, but I get a lot of uh, questions about that. So, anyway, so that's cool.